Hello, I'm Larry Karaszewski and welcome to Trailers from Hell. Right now we're going to celebrate the cinematic partnership of Frank and Eleanor Perry by taking a look at 1969's Brilliant Neglected Last Summer. Frank and Eleanor Perry were pioneers of the modern American independent film movement. They were making movies outside the system, telling unconventional stories without big stars or budgets. Frank directed, Eleanor wrote the screenplays. Their first major success was David and Lisa in 1962, which earned them both Academy Award nominations, which was unheard of at the time for an indie production. The success got them pulled into the big leagues to adapt the John Cheever short story, The Swimmer, with Burt Lancaster. I think that movie is fantastic, but it's hard to know whom to credit. The film was taken away from the Perrys, and much of it was reshot by director Sidney Pollack. Next, the Perrys returned to their indie roots to adapt an Evan Hunter novel, Last Summer, a very dark film about the cruelty of teenagers. Now, you never see the parents in this film. The teens are free to do what they please on the beach in Fire Island. Frank gets great performances here. He really was an actor's director. He loves to watch people. His direction is quiet, never flashy. Bruce Davison and Richard Thomas are the boys who are easily manipulated by the young, sexy Barbara Hershey. Hershey was so taken with this film that for several years she changed her last name to Siegel, based on a sequence in Last Summer. But the actress who really shines here is Kathy Burns, as the sweet, ugly duckling who wants to fit in with the cool kids and pays a terrible price. There's a rather brutal rape scene late in the film that was quite controversial. Miss Burns got an Oscar nomination for last summer. She's great, particularly in a long monologue she delivers about her mother's death. It's a shame this didn't lead to more things for Kathy Burns. Her only other major film is the terrific Red Sky at Morning, also co-starring Richard Thomas. Bruce Davison is very good here, too. He, it's interesting that my two favorite films of his, this and Longtime Companion, both take place out on Fire Island. The Perry's final work together was 1970's Carrie Snodgrass film, Diary of a Mad Housewife. I think that movie is their masterpiece. But then the Perry's marriage fell apart and the two went their separate ways. Frank continued working, but his later films lacked Eleanor's psychological depth. He never reached this kind of artistic peak again.